Hey everyone, Gabs here. Let's get to it. In this video, I'm going to discuss the concept of pain and how it teaches and helps the fallen characters invincible grow into who they are meant to be. Angstrom Levy, originally a pacifist who can create portals to leave his enemies stranded in another universe, Angstrom desperately wants to be the hero to save the universe from the scourge of Mark and Nolan. After seeing the multiple versions of Mark Grayson slaughter versions of humanity over countless dimensions, Angstrom decides to synchronize and consolidate 1,000 versions of his mind across multiple dimensions in the hopes of destroying the Vilchamite father and son duo. When current timeline Mark arrives to stop Levy and the Maulers from continuing with the sync process, Levy tries to tell the Maulers to not kill Mark, but to subdue him. The Maulers from another dimension ignore Levy's pleas and continue to beat Mark to death. At this moment, Angstrom makes a promise that he will not build his utopia on top of blood and interrupts the sync process to stop the Maulers from murdering Invincible. However, this small act of kindness causes the power of the device to spiral out of control, explode, and destroy most of the alternate versions of the Maulers and Levies in the process. This explosion grotesquely altered the original Angstrom, who pled to not rest until he has killed Invincible. The purpose of Angstrom's pain was caused by his rush to save Invincible without calculating what the cost would do to him. He thought he could attain the power he needed while remaining a pacifist. His hubris and fatal flaw is when he invited the other Maulers into the current universe to restrain Invincible. He did not count on the Maulers' ulterior motives and bloodlust. He thought like everything else, he could calculate and control the situation. Rudy. Rudy has always been an individual who knew how to solve problems even the problem of his original disabled body. However, he could not solve the problem of fear, a very natural emotion for all living beings. This same fear caused Rudy to make miscalculations in judgment when fighting the giant. These errors in judgment were one too many since inhabiting his new body and ultimately caused Rudy to lose command of his team. To fill this new hole, Rudy decides to turn all of his energy into fixing Amanda, aka Monster Girl. Yet again, Rudy feels he knows what is best and does not take into account how Monster Girl feels about being fixed. The purpose of Rudy's pain is to learn to let go of his need to fix others and work on trusting in the abilities of not only his teammates, but of himself. Monster Girl wants Rudy to open up to her and to not let, look at her as a gadget or problem to solve. She wants Rudy to open up to his mistakes, which he learns to do so by apologizing to her. Donald Ferguson and Rick In season one, Donald sacrificed himself by blowing up the safe house with him and Omni-Man inside. Donald has no idea of this when he approaches Debbie for the first time since the blast. Debbie's shocked by his mere presence. This causes Donald to pull at a string of what she knows that he does not. Furthermore, what does Cecil and the GDA know that he doesn't? And the even bigger question is why are all of them not telling him? Donald attempts to talk to Debbie, but she is not home. When Donald attempts to talk to Cecil, he is brushed off as not a priority. Donald finally gets the courage to examine some of the recordings of the explosion, and he finally sees he could not have survived such an incident. When he takes a knife and buries it into his skin, he is relieved that he can feel pain and see blood flow. However, upon closer examination of the blade, Donald discovers that the tip of the blade is damaged from impact. When he further examines the wound, he sees nothing but metallic skeleton where bone and sinew should have been. Rick in season one was a victim of D.A. Sinclair's vile humanoid experiments. He has been reconstructed with the latest technology but he still retains fragments of his memories of what happened to him. A fractured human being 
who remembers the horrors of being under the influence of D.A. Sinclair's programming. This has caused Rick to feel not quite alive, but not dead either. Something in between. Where Rick differs from Donald is that he has memories, however scant, of his life before and during his assimilation. A pain that lingers because he can still remember who he used to be to some extent. Whereas Donald's memories have been wiped with each new operation. A fact that Cecil tells Donald that the original Donald wanted to have implemented as a form of tactical advantage in the field. Both men have experienced immense pain and loss. Both men have been ripped apart and put back together. Rick's torment causes him to take drastic matters into his own hands. A sense of agency, both powerful and disheartening, and attempts to jump off a roof. It's not William who can bring him back from the brink. It's actually Donald. Both men have a common bond of lost humanity, of being lied to, and used as tools and weapons, and have their agency taken away. Only Donald can see what remains within Rick because it's the same feeling that remains within Donald. That is a feeling of hope. The purpose of Donald and Rick's pain is to give each other hope. That there is more to their, exist their existence than meets the eye. They can choose to either be victims or agents of change. Debbie Grayson Debbie is a woman who has lived through extraordinary circumstances. She has lived triple lives of being the secret wife of the great Omni-Man, the mother to Mark Grayson, the son of Omni-Man, and now stepmother to Oliver Grayson, a son created from another marriage from another species entirely. With all of this, she has no one to confide her thoughts, her fears, her burdens, her rage, her loneliness. She has been tasked with ensuring that Mark does not turn into another Omni-Man. But what of Debbie's needs and desires? Who is going to take her pain away? Early in Season 2, we see Debbie take a proactive approach in unloading some of her built-up trauma and attend a support group for spouses of superheroes. She confides in a fellow support member named Theo, who lost their spouse, Alana, a.k.a. the Green Ghost, to the hands of Omni-Man. When Debbie shows true strength of character and empathy and fesses up that she is the wife of Omni-Man, Theo condemns her for loving a monster. Theo tells her, to not come back to the group, that her mere presence in the group would not be a safe space. This scene exemplifies Debbie's trait to tell the truth, no matter the consequences. The next scene we see of Debbie mirrors the opening scene in episode four, where we see Nolan attempting to end it all. Debbie looks out to a highway overpass and comes dangerously close to ending it all. Something keeps her from taking that leap. That something could be Mark, but I believe Debbie deep inside wanted to see Nolan again. I think the reason she did not offer herself was out of her love and devotion to Nolan, Mark, and the possibility of being a family again. When Debbie arrives home, she goes through old pictures of Mark and Nolan, and suddenly Mark wishes back with a surprise. This surprise angers Debbie, but seeing how Mark has grown to love and take care of his new baby brother, rekindles that spark in Debbie to hang in there once more. Her hopes of being a family is validated in this moment with Mark, and she has the strength to endure this new challenge. The show is called Invincible, and for the most part, we are led to believe that Mark is indeed invincible. This is true, but I believe Invincible did not become invincible all by himself. His mother's love and strength have been the deciding factors for several events in the story. Debbie has kept Nolan from slaughtering the planet unknowingly through her love and devotion. She reared Mark when Nolan was away and taught him how to be kind and just. She made sure Mark went to college, and she was the deciding factor when Angstrom Levy was about to kill baby Oliver. Debbie, Debbie even gives baby Oliver his name, her father's name. She also made sure that the government did not rear Oliver and that she and Mark would do so together. 
She has taken on beings and organizations like the GDA that are far more powerful than she. She has come out alive, scarred, but stronger than before. The purpose of Debbie's pain is to endure no matter what, to know the truth and rise above it. These are traits she passes on to Mark as well. Season two was a chance for the characters to reset at the events of season one. The Chicago incident, which Omni-Man cast, was devastating. But the small battles that each of the characters were going through before Omni-Man's slaughter had also taken a toll, but were never fully addressed. In part two, we will discuss Omni-Man, Mark, Amber, the Immortal, and one of the MVPs of season two, in my opinion, in terms of growth, Rexplode. See you in part two of Invincible, season two, The Purpose of Pain. Thank you.